Ladies and gentlemen, this is UX and this is Warmer 40k Space Marine review by the channel Mandalore Gaming. Space Marine was Relic's attempt to bring the Warmer 40,000's franchise to new action-oriented audience. So this was the first one, first Warmer 40k video which has action element to it. And this review armchair judges how well. What's a Codis Astartes? Question mark. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go. Mental or Gaming is obviously a great uh, game review channel uh, who reviews things uh, in detail. So it's going to be fun. Remember, if you like my Rick's and Rufford, like, subscribe. Check out the Rick's and Dave. There's a link in the description. Check out the Kasek with the ink cards in here. Let's go. They must have a chainsaw. The dark chill of winter is here, so it's the perfect time to talk about a game that takes place entirely on a factory hell planet. Good old Space Marine, third person shooter and home to the world's most honest main menu. If you have any cultural or religious objections to orc violence, well, now is the time to go. For Captain Titus here, peace on earth comes from orc genocide. The only Christmas treats he carries detonate above ground for maximum flavor. That didn't make sense. Okay, it's not a Christmas game. In fact, Warhammer has some better candidates, but maybe another time. Now as you know, Warhammer 40k has a very rich and huge universe, so rather than me explain it, let's have the game do it. Yeah, the end. For being a game introducing a new audience to the series, it really does nothing at all to explain anything. You do learn that orcs are invading a planet. While normally the Imperium might just bomb them from orbit, there's a big bomb. Well, you can't really explain Warhammer 40k in that brief, can you? And especially this game is basically just shoot. I mean, it's not a really storytelling game, is it? Right? It's mostly just a shooter on a map, right? If I, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, Space Marine is, you know, everybody's telling me it's a great game for what it is. But it's not some story-driven, you know, RPG style of game. So how is it going to explain the story? There's only one. It's Grim Darkness. And there you go. Your Space Marine kill any Xenos come, you come across. There you go. That's the story. Boxy Evangelion you have to protect down there. So what do they do? Send the Space Marines. It's a simple setup and you really don't need to know the lore. You just need to be Blue Man and shoot Green Man in the face. So really, this is the opposite of the Halo series. But I'm not so sure about later on. I'd imagine new people to be confused, but it's not a deal breaker. So just focus on this for now. I'll come back to all that in a bit. The game is nearing a decade old now and it certainly looks the part. Some textures are low res, can noticeably pop in, and the same can be said for things out in the distance. The lighting is still nice and there are good little details like the reflections in the armor. It's nothing landmark, but not bad either. I do appreciate it more based on just the sheer scale of the environment. It sure looks the part of a planetary factory. There are some huge real 3D objects that in most other games would just be out in the skybox. Take this crane that's the size of Rhode Island. It's slowly turning, doing its thing. Then when you fight under it, you realize that the entire thing and every greeble on it is casting a shadow. So sacrifices had to be made to give the authentic scale. Technically sound one moment, questionable in another. This game does have some bland areas, but a lot more are really inspired. Pulling Gigantic off the structures is a one more thing. and a factory aesthetic can't be easy. But they pulled it off and they gave the setting some strong art direction with a lot of attention and little details. However, what you see here is what you get. There's not a ton of variety. If you can't stand games that are just brown or gray, then stay far away from this one. It's not all a mixed bag though, because what really stands out to me is the animation. Uh, Alex's reputation for the Dawn of War Saint kills can- It's grim darkness. What you want? Colorful, so, you know, colors with rainbows? Come on. I mean, sure, there are worlds like that, right? In, uh, uh, what are they called? I forgot. Uh, I saw the major kill video on that. Whatever they're called, certain worlds that are really, you know, great and pristine looking. But this is not that. Continues well into this game. They're just as impressive as they are violent. Like Dawn of War, it seems like every time I replay this game, I find a couple more. That's right. As also expected from Relic, the combat and weapons sound excellent. Some people thought the Space Marine sounds in Dawn of War 1 were lacking, but they more than made up for it here. Oh, that clanking bullets out of this awesome. 
Look at that. It was a big color there. The new combat will be so chaotic that you might not be looking at your ammo count. So some weapons actually sound different when they're low on ammo to tell you that you need to reload soon. Well, that's not really unique, is it? Which game has that? Wait a minute, Fallout 4 has that? Is it? I remember playing a game a lot, actually. Which, by the end of that, it makes us... Wait a minute, Borderlands 3? Borderlands 2? I don't know. But many games uses that thing, right? Because you don't have to constantly look at the map, so by the end of it, it will start to clank, 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 you just, oh, look at this, it's about to be empty. The soundtrack is another high point. It's not Relic's best soundtrack, but it accents a lot of moments in the game perfectly. The orchestra music can border on being generic, but when the horns really get going, they get going. Ultras morphs are kicking up its ass. Honestly, I find parts of the soundtrack kind of hilarious. It reminded me of Starship Troopers or Robocop a lot because the music's really heroic, but the most horrific shit is happening on screen. Is dead. <laughs> yeah, that's casualties yeah, that's not a big thing. Marines. Well, the environmental sounds are okay. My biggest issue with the sound is the mixing on some of the voices. It's odd because the Dawn of War games have some of the best stuff in video games, but here it's really out of whack. Even cranking the voice audio level above everything else didn't always help it. Damaged at least. Titan Invictus seems unused. You mean? Is this invasion not enough to bring out the War Titans? It takes hundreds to get a War Titan operational site. Are you wounded? The Codex Astartes warns against using jump packs to leap blindly into enemy fire, and for good reason. Your days as a novice are behind you. Why do you still interpret the Codex so... So that sucks, but luckily it's a very small portion of the game compared to the combat. They had their priorities in order. We should talk about that, shouldn't we? Space Marine is all combat. No platform... Yeah, see, that's the thing. Probably developers thought, nobody's going to complain about this voice. I mean, come on, voice? What, what, what the fuck is wrong with you? Just take the chainsaw to the orcs. This is just, you know, fighting game. Kill orcs, man. Bring <laughs> no tact on puzzles, no nothing. And you know what? The combat is pure joy. You have five weapons at a time. A choice of pistol, a bolter, two other weapons, and then your melee weapon. The level of destruction you unleash is just absurd. You're like an atomic bomb if an atomic bomb was a big metal fist. There's so much impact to the combat. Your enemies don't just get shot and fall over, they usually blow up. You upgrade some of your weapons during the campaign and have plenty of opportunities to switch things out. So you have a lot of room to experiment until you find the chosen way. There's a great variety of weapons, and while they're not the most creative- Don't want to pause too much, but anybody who doesn't know Warhammer lore at all would be thinking like, okay, Orcs versus this blue power suit Fallout guys. So it must be a match, uh, match play, right? Or maybe Orcs are powerful because that's how it goes in all the other lore, that Orcs are literally toe-to-toe -to -toe powerful. But in this, uh, this is our Ultramarine, not just any. Any Astartes are already OP, right? As the, you know, the lore suggests, any Astartes are really OP, one-on-one. -on -one. Ultramarines are even more OP, right? Orcs can be powerful, but not one-on-one -on -one against the Ultramarines. So, they, you know, fighting like this, you know, it feels like, okay, we are just kicking everybody's ass, because that is how it should be, even in the lore. Ultramarines are really fucking powerful. If thing, they get more destructive over time. There's nothing like mowing down a crowd with a storm bolter or becoming a human meteor with a thunder hammer. There are some challenging parts, but even on hard, this is more of a power fantasy game. You have two melee buttons, a hitman button and a stun. So it can feel like a mash fest, and it's like this for every close combat weapon. Most of the thinking comes from deciding when to do an execution move. These can only be done on most of your enemies when they're stunned. If you pull it off, you get a gory display and you get some health back. Your overshield recovers over time, your red bar does not. At the same time, you're not invincible during these execution moves. So if you time them poorly, the other Jolly Green Giants will start mugging you. So you can't rely entirely on ranged combat to stay alive. Space Marine wants you to use a fine artisan blend. And that's the strongest point of the combat. 
Because it controls so simply, you can seamlessly change between ranged and melee fighting. You don't fight the camera, you don't need to lock on, it feels very natural. When you murder enough, you fill up your fury meter. Popping this off recharges your health and makes your attacks even more dangerous. This also upgrades and eventually lets you shoot in slow motion. And that's as deep as it goes. This isn't Devil May Cry. As much as I'd love air juggling Gretchens, you just can't do that, you could just slap them into the Shadow Realm. So if you love those kinds of games, you might find Space Marine lacking. Even the ranged combat is simple compared to a lot of third-person shooters. The game has no cover system, that was probably part of the marketing. Maybe it's because cats were already going to call it a Gears ripoff because of the chainsword? I don't know. It didn't matter most of the time, but on occasion, and especially in the later parts of the game, I think a basic one for big objects would have helped. Because you're still hiding behind a box and awkwardly popping out to shoot, but then again this might just be more noticeable and hard because their bullets hurt you more. So overall, it's a simple system, but effective. The execution mechanic encourages you to be very aggressive, and also you want to switch things up to keep your fury meter going. I always wondered if Doom 2016 got the idea for the execution health mechanic from this game. At the same time, enemies dropping health has been a thing forever, so who knows. The spectacle and the impact of the combat is enjoyable to watch and really easy to pull off. I mean, I've replayed this game a few times, they're doing something right. It's an ideal si Yeah, see that's the thing. The, it, you, this is basically your average boom boom game. Shoot slash nothing more technical than that. You think like, hmm, maybe, what the fuck, that's gonna get old. But see, something simplistic can also be fun if done right. If you make the map great, which it is, I mean, obviously we've seen so far how greatly detailed made maps are, the sound effects, you know, uh, how certain music plays at certain times, right? And just, you know, the setting that you fight in. Even a simplistic slash and hack type of, uh, you know, fighting style can be really fun. Killing orcs at different areas, you know, slowly capturing areas as you go along, area looking awesome like the crane and shit. It, it becomes fun. ...system for most of the game, but it does come back to hurt it in some other ways. So let's talk about the gameplay pacing. It's quiet. The first two-thirds of this game has excellent pacing. It ramps everything up just the right way. Every level there's something new to fight, and besides them, you typically have at least one new item and upgrade. They keep things fresh, you're never bogged down in one area for too long. Then for one level, the new orc enemies stop coming, which is a shame. It wasn't like there was nothing to draw from. An enemy like Burna Boys would make you stay more on your toes in melee. One part of this section has a huge dust storm going on. This would have been the perfect opportunity to bring in some stealth enemies like orc commandos. Unfortunately, the only trick the orcs have left at this point are numbers, which they always do. Then right after this is a level of fighting turrets, and that's it. But they are scary. Then, holy shit, Chaos is here. A whole new faction to fight. I no guess way. they're on the cover. I was surprised. I went, wow, these demons can dodge Torn my ammunition. <laughs> but could they dodge all my ammunition? No, they can't. The game doesn't have many Chaos units, they're treated as an elite group. <laughs> Their entrance is great. I'm just thinking in my head, after seeing that scene at a con, in his, you know, ch sitting on his you know, b b b skull throne like that and just thinking, hmm, maybe we should, we need guns. We should implement more guns rather than just what? Maybe our demons need guns. <laughs> great and heralds the way for a three-way war, but fighting Chaos itself isn't as fun as fighting the orcs. The game's strength is mixing up styles to fight hordes of enemies, and Chaos Boys are bullet sponges. Their weapons are also accurate and hit hard, making you shuffle around cover more. This is where you really start to notice the shortcomings of the chaos. combat systems, if you haven't already. Now I'm playing something that feels much more like a cover shooter without the cover mechanic. Until this point, orc weapons are comically inaccurate. You still get hit, but most of their shots go all over the place because they're just excited to be shooting a gun off. These guys are the exact <laughs> opposite, so you have to change your mind and your loadout to be more range-oriented. It's still fine, there are good fights here, but it's when things start feeling off and it perfectly foreshadows the end of the game. I'll just say for now, the final boss is a quick time event. The story itself is difficult to talk about because it's so straightforward. What do I say about the cover me while I hack this door mission or the blow this thing up mission? I think I got more out of world building moments like guardsmen revering space marines and they see them. Or the announcements. An alien invasion is no excuse for being late to work. Workers must be met. Despite alien incursions, delinquency is an affront. Oh yeah, the orcs are having a fight club in the loading bay, but don't worry, we'll make those pipes just fine. Also, if you've played this game before, the collectible <laughs> audio love, logs don't work. I love orcs, man. They're like, oh, look at that war's going on. Let's, f let's make a fight club because it's all about fighting. For them, this is not a war. For them, this is fun. This is what they like doing. <laughs> Turn to the game. You can listen to them when you pick them up and walk around, but if you already have one, you have to listen to them in the menu. And you can't listen to them while walking around. Experimentation with the warp. Experimentation with the warp in it. Trans mechanic second class pitch.
Yeah, so get used to some quiet hallways in another playthrough. So now I'm gonna get into story spoilers, and honestly, there's not a whole lot here. I'll still leave a courtesy code to skip to. Oh, okay. Okay, they're gone. I really don't know what they're trying to save themselves for. So the game starts with we need to murder orcs, and that's how it stays most of the way through. We have the titular Captain Titus, fuck Captain Titus, grizzled veteran friend Sidonis, and Matt Ward stand-in Leo. Leonidas? Leo... Leonard? I don't remember... Leo... Leandros, okay. He's the new guy still clutching his blueberry boy scout menu. Many orcs die, and then you meet an inquisitor who has a plan to kill even more orcs. He wants to use a warp-powered device to obliterate all of them. Hmm, I don't know. The real Inquisitor was killed by a demon, and you got tricked into bringing chaos into the world. So we were fighting Boss Grimskull and the orcs the whole game, but now we have a new bad guy. So this Chaos Lord is the main target now. Even before this, Leonard is giving Titus a bunch of shit because he can resist the warp for some reason. He can't see beyond his own stupid book, so Grizzled Old Sidonis has to calm him down. Codex Astartes warns that those in league with chaos can withstand the warp's touch. You forget yourself, Ultramarine. Then Sidonis dies, so Leopold is even more suspicious now. So then Titus goes to beat up the Chaos Lord while he's actively ascending into a demon. This is a good way of showing loyalty. Also, it is really strange that the boss fights a QTE, because there were two other bosses in the game, and they weren't good. At this point, they may have realized the combat wasn't ideal for these kinds of fights, they just said forget it. Anyways, Titus caves his skull in, and it's all happily ever after from there. Oh, the hand. Oh, sorry, the hand is... I thought he is missing a hand. <laughs> I see the Ultramarines are human. After all. More than you know, Lieutenant. Though no shit. There's a superhuman. Nope, the Inquisition is here to ruin everyone's day. Again. Oh, no. His injuries appear chaos inflicted. You are certain? Of this charge? Captain Titus has been corrupted by Chaos, Inquisitor Thrax. I am no heretic! You lie! So he gets arrested. What was the warp thing all about? How could he resist it? We'll find out in game two, but now we'll never find out. The game doesn't have many characters, and it doesn't develop them out either. I kind of like some of them, but I don't really know them. Even the squad mates here with the whole game talk about nothing else besides the mission. This is no bad company or Republic Commando. I wish the conflict between buy the book or interpret the codex was fleshed out more. It could have made the position Leroy's in more sympathetic, and there was opportunity to do this. I wish that instead of just talking about the mission, they talked about each other more. There are plenty of places to put stuff in. Though he is trapped on this world. And all the more desperate to recover the power source. We must get it to safety, old friend. Good news on that front. Lieutenant Mira reports that the Liberation Fleet has entered the system. The Inquisition will surely have sent agents with the fleet, Captain. Perhaps we can... run out of things to say. Hard work occupies the body and Do you have a concern you'd like to share? It is a noble it's underdeveloped and it ends up being dull. It's not written badly, just so pragmatically that it's not very memorable. Of course, for many, the meat of this game was the multiplayer. It has good character customization, a lot of things to unlock, and plenty of game modes. But you can't search for every mode at once, which means a fractured community, which means not-so-active multiplayer. You can still find matches for the Wave Base Exterminatus going, but for regular multiplayer, you need to find a Steam group. There are some popular ones, so the game isn't dead just yet. In fact, in a way, the multiplayer kind of lives on in another game called e You know what? It's the holidays. I don't want to think about it for now. Space Marine is a short game, but it's worth your time, and it goes on sale often. This was going to be a trilogy, but it came out in a very saturated year. It came out two weeks before Dark Souls and two months before Skyrim. So it wasn't winning any headlines, and <laughs> arguably- What? Oh god, Skyrim, really? Elder Scrolls? I mean, regardless of which game we're talking about, Elder Scrolls is way too big. Right, after, after, after Morrowind, like, holy shit, Oblivion come, oh my god, it's, it's even perfection, right, all the demons and everything, after that, two mega, mega hits, Skyrim people were literally waiting for it, like, when Skyrim coming, that was a way too strong of a window to touch, releasing any game around Skyrim was a fucking mistake. It wasn't even the best sort killing game that came out that year. It's a tragedy. <laughs> I always thought a sequel might be a kind of opposite to this game. It would be on a big jungle planet of Tyranids. Well, for the time being, I don't think any of us are seeing that. But wait, there are other Warhammer games. Sure, some are unbearable shit. Yeah, Space Marine 2 Thriller came out, right? Aware, but there are some good ones too. Some great ones, even. I'll look at some of those in the new year, after a return to a remake and an adventure game. For now, have a wonderful Christmas. Even if it's just us tonight. Could be worse.
Oh, yeah. there you go. It's the end. All right. I don't know. Space Marine uh, feels decent for just a shooter. I mean, what what more do you want? It was a pretty simplistic game, right? You know, everything's so basic, but it's just you kill orcs, and sometimes you kill demons of corn, demons of chaos. The setting is awesome. You're playing a Warhammer game, so in itself is awesome. And there is also multiplayer, so there you go. I'm pretty sure the game was decent enough. There's a Space Marine 2 now. The trailer came out. And, uh, you know, it's really amped up even better. So, yeah, I guess the game did fine for them to make Space Marine 2. All right. All right, well, that was Warhammer 40k Space Marine Review by Mandalore Gaming. Uh, if you like Marie Xen, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the Rick Sunday. There's a link in the description. Check out the classic thing cards. And, yeah, I'll see you next time.